Welcome back to our channel, Coffee Lovers. Have you ever wondered how that cup of decaf coffee you enjoy every evening is made? Well, today we're going to take you on a journey through the fascinating world of decaffeination. We'll explore the methods, the science, and the impact on your favorite brew. So, grab your favorite mug and let's dive into how is decaf made? Our first stop on this decaf adventure is the world of chemical solvent-based methods. There are two main approaches, the direct solvent process and the indirect solvent process. In the direct solvent process, green coffee beans are steamed to prepare them for caffeine extraction. They are then rinsed with chemical solvents like methylene chloride or ethyl acetate for about 10 hours. The indirect solvent process takes a different route. Coffee beans are soaked in boiling water to collect the flavor and oil components. The water is then transferred and washed with solvents. These solvents selectively bond with caffeine molecules, leaving behind decaffeinated beans. Afterward, the solvent and caffeine are evaporated, and the beans are reunited with the flavorful components. For those of you who prefer a more natural approach, there's the non-solvent paste method, such as the Swiss water process. The Swiss water process relies on caffeine solubility and osmosis to remove caffeine from coffee. Beans, the beans are soaked in hot water, dissolving caffeine and flavor compounds. A charcoal filter separates caffeine while preserving those delicious coffee flavors. Our final destination in the decaffeination journey is the supercritical carbon dioxide method. It's like coffee science fiction. In this method, coffee beans are soaked in water, expanding their cell structures. Then, they're exposed to supercritical carbon dioxide, which acts as both a gas and a liquid, caffeinated CO to evaporate. And the beans remain virtually unchanged in taste. So, which decaffeination method do you prefer? Each has its unique pros and cons, and the choice can affect the taste of your decaf coffee. But remember, even though these methods reduce caffeine content significantly, decaf coffee is not entirely caffeine-free. It must contain no less than 97% less caffeine to earn that decaf title. That's it for today's episode of How is Decaf Made? We hope you enjoyed this caffeinated journey into the world of decaffeination. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep brewing and sipping.